Hi guys, welcome to ASB Miniature Studio and this week I'm going to be showcasing my Age of Sigma Lady Ollander book nook that I made for my wife's birthday. Here's some general footage of that book nook and I'm going to be talking to you today about the various steps I went through to create this piece. It has colour changing LEDs built into it as well as a working fog machine. The artwork itself and the colour scheme for the miniature was based on the cover of the Black Library novel Lady of Sorrows. So let's crack on with how I put this piece together. So in this unsuspecting gourmet cat food box are the pieces I used. The first piece was on top of the box there and was the MDF laser cut book nook. I ordered one on eBay and I bought a medium sized one. Inside the box I had a soldering iron, some natural glycerin which is the main part that forms the fog, some 9 volt battery connectors and buttons as well as some electrical uh, heat shrinks, some solder And then these are the ends of a vape pen. These are the actual element that holds the vape juice and then creates that fog effect. These can be bought separately so you don't need to buy an entire vape pen and bin half of it. I then got some aquarium tubing. This was to hook up to the vape pen and then the other end was hooked up to an aquarium pump which when wired to the 9 volt battery would pump air through the vape element and create that fog effect. So here is the actual aquarium pump. And then I also got hold of a Sigmanite mausoleum wall section for the backdrop of the diorama. And then from Bits Box, I ordered various torsos and hands of zombies so that I can have these hands projecting up out of the ground, reaching for Lady Orlando herself here in the box, ready to be assembled. So the first step of the build was to dry fit my book nook. Now the one I brought was very reasonably priced on eBay, but didn't come with any instructions. And you may think, it's very simple. The pieces go where the pieces go. But I did find as I was dry fitting this that you could accidentally put a top where it should be the bottom and vice versa, because there's a chamber at the top and a chamber at the bottom for hiding in various pieces for your book nook, whether it be sound or lighting based. So dry fitting it was definitely a very wise step to undertake and once I was happy that the pieces were all in the correct location, as you can see at the front there I've left the front for the top recess and the bottom recess off and they're ever so slightly different. So dry fitting it was definitely a good idea before I glued it together which for this build I just used PVA but to complete the dry fitting, I just got some masking tape and pinned it together with this whilst I was planning out the other parts, including the base for the diorama and where the electronics would be housed. As I say, there's a recess at the top and the bottom, so my initial thoughts are the top will be for the lighting and the bottom will be for the circuitry relating to the fog machine button, 9 volt battery, and then possibly see if I could fit the aquarium pump there as well. My other reason for wanting to dry fit the book nook was to work out the size of the diorama. I had it in my head that it would be a hillside with this fence at the back and the fog would creep through that fence line and there would be various graves dotted around below Lady Ollander. But without the book nook assembled it was hard to size these up exactly. So the next stage was to quickly build the miniature for this I used a mixture of Tamiya Extra Thin glue. This was to glue the main parts of it together and wherever I had a, a mould line I would squeeze the bits together to push a bit of the, the uh, melted plastic out and then I could go back over with my 10 scalpel blade and get a nice smooth finish. I then also used some Tamiya Extra Thin Rapid Setting Glue, the one with the lime green lid there, to burn away some of the mould lines. I find if you brush this on very thinly on the mould lines it will actually burn some of those away for you and give a nice smooth finish. This is a piece that I cut out from the middle of the sprue. It's the main gate, the circular gate in the middle. I filed this flat and I drilled a hole through it and I then drilled a hole through the base and got a cocktail stick, put this through the two elements and cut it to length. 
I then drilled out a hole in the base of the miniature and then using PVA glue bonded these together and that allowed me to have the miniature on its base which made it gave me something to hold it by whilst I was painting it but then I could easily pull it apart from the PVA glue with very little force before then pinning it down into the diorama base. The LED lights I purchased were a set for putting into uh, an outdoor pond and uh, they were IP rated so they're waterproof and I think five with a controller is what I purchased and then I planned that if I drilled a hole ever so slightly smaller than that LED and put it above the miniature then it would cascade different colour lights down onto the model and I think in the end I opted for ever so slightly behind the model was the perfect place for me to position the lighting so that you could still see the colour of the model without it being washed out by a blue or a green light. So similar to how I'm sat now basically, but the lights are behind me and it's backlighting me in these spooky colours rather than if it were in front of me and it would make my skin appear, that blue and green tone. I then got some XPS foam that I had left over from my Necromunda diorama base and cut this to size to start planning out the hillside element of the diorama. So using my retractable blade to very carefully cut this to the correct width, discarding that triangular section, then pushing it into the book nook, making sure it's a nice tight fit, and then working out the length that the foam needed to be cut to, to give me that diorama base and I could then finish planning this. I glued the head together separately from the body to make it easier to paint on the miniature. I glued that to a cocktail stick and then to a wooden cube and then the whole lot was given a undercoat of Citadel Grey Seer. Many hours of soldering later, I will put a link to the video I followed for this because in no way am I a, an electronics or soldering expert and I don't think I should be advising people how to do this. I actually burnt both my thumbs working on this, you'll see plasters in this video, but I was able to hook the button up to the 9 volt battery, wire the battery to the aquarium pump and the vape element, connect the pump to the vape element with a section of aquarium uh, pipe work and then by pressing the button you then get the clear glycerin being heated up in that vape element and creating this artificial fog, which is very thick and would actually sit on the desk. It was quite a cool effect. I then used a coring drill bit. This is designed for cutting through wood and cutting the exact circular hole into the position, as I described earlier, for the light, making sure that it was ever so slightly smaller than the LED so this wouldn't just fall straight through the top. I think I then used a piece of XPS foam painted black to secure that in place. So here I am just finalising the size of my base section. I decided that I wanted to leave an approximate 2cm gap at the back of the diorama, somewhere for the fog to build up before it cascaded through that fence line. And speaking of that Sigma Knight Mausoleum fence line, you see there doing one last double check of how wide to cut it. I didn't want to have to try and source another one of these so using red felt tip there to mark on the width that it needed to be cut to. So once I had the base cut to the correct width I then went back over with my retractable blade and started carving this into a hillside shape. So trying to do this in one clean movement with a relatively new and sharp blade to get a nice clean cut and I just carve away at this until it is a so it forms the slope that I think will work with the piece. Then I had these Mantic Terrain Create uh, gravestones on spring and started cutting off the pieces to form a grave surrounded by a few headstones. Just again dry fitting it, seeing what I felt looked best and then the moment of truth came for had I measured the Sigmanite fence line enough times, the mausoleum fence line, cutting this very carefully with a hobby saw to get a nice straight cut. Once one side was cut, putting this onto the base 
and using that as the final rail guide for cutting it to, to the correct width and then getting the last of those uh, Mantic Terrain Crate headstones off of the sprue and looking at starting to fit these to that base. These were pinned in with a variety of cocktail sticks and paper clips to, and then fixed using PVA glue so that it wouldn't, nothing solvent based so that it wouldn't melt away the XPS foam and still create a nice solid bond on, on this base. Next I aligned the main grave that will be at the base of the miniature and before I fix this down finally I gave the entire base a coat of Vallejo uh, earth paste texture, texture paste, uh, to give the whole field or slope a muddy uh, unkept appearance, um, like it had been raining heavily. I put this on really thickly to give that muddied ground texture. I then could go back along with the grave and the headstones and push these down into the mud so it looked like the mud had built up around them in the rain and that the rather than waiting for it to dry and putting them on top where they'd be there'd be a clear disconnect between the two pieces wherever there were gaps I went back around with a coffee stirrer and manipulated this mud while it was still wet and here's the finished base I gave this various dry brushes with brown used lichen used tufts of different sizes and some green stuff world um, leaves and there you can see the hands of those zombies fitted to some crackle paste on the grave to look like they're breaking through the ground and reaching up towards Lady Ollalanda as she glides across across this uh, graveyard. I gave these a nice ghostly paint effect using a mixture of Corolla green shade and like the oxide and again this colour scheme repeated on the miniature above. I painted a backdrop on a sheet of grey card uh, using various blues and greens through my airbrush. I then painted a cylindrical moon and using an AK interactive texture stencil went over with various shades of grey to give that moon uh, a, its texture appearance and then the whole book nook was given a final dry brush of army painter tainted gold. So here is the final piece on my workbench, just doing one last check to make sure the coloured lighting's working and to make sure that that fog machine is still giving that cascading fog effect, which I say that glycerine is just natural glycerine, so there's no scent, there's no taste from it, it doesn't leave a smell or any residue, and it's really thick that when you can see as it comes out through the pipe there that it instantly settles down on the model and then works its way around like that traditional horror movie uh, fog that the the exact effect I was looking for I was very pleased with with the wiring of this so before we move on to some final glamour shots of the miniature I didn't glue this in so that it could be taken out and photographed separately I would just ask that if you have found this video interesting or um, if you've enjoyed the video, if you could please consider leaving me a like and subscribe because it really does help out the channel. Hi guys, thanks for staying to the end of the video. If you did, then you are a wonderful person who is definitely bound for hobby greatness and I wish you all the best in your own projects. I hope to see you next time here at OSP Miniature Studio and until then, take care.